behind bars and stay. Flory is within spec. Excellent. We're switching over and coming in hot with the wand. Want you to open the valve. Now. Good. Pressure, good. Okay, careful. That steam is hot and under pressure. I want you to rotate 270 degrees and keep the nozzle just above. Oh, great. That's just great. Good job, Jim. That is exactly how you mess up foam for a latte. I can't work like this. Kids these days, <laughs> they got it a lot easier than I did back in the day. What's that supposed to mean? It means that you got a lot to learn. Please, what can a guy like me learn from a guy like you? <laughs> First off, you can learn some respect. Then you can learn a little bit about how lucky you are to be living in a time like today. <laughs> back when I was working my claim up here in Leadville, I didn't have any of the stuff that you take for granted. Yeah? Like what? Well, let's see. How about respirators, for one thing? Heavy equipment to make my job easier. Ventilation, automation, regulation. <laughs> Back in my day, all I had was my tools, my Colt Peacemaker, and my wits. You had trouble up topside with the claim jumpers and thieves, trouble down below with cave-ins, bad air, everything else that could go wrong. <laughs> Not like today, no sir. You got it pretty easy there, sitting in that chair, pushing them buttons. <laughs> Hey, what kind of drink is that anyway? Some kind of frilly drink from New York City? <laughs> hey, take it easy, partner. He's just a kid, and he's the future. Hello, I'm Dr. Harrison Schmidt, Apollo 17 astronaut, former senator, university professor. But first and foremost, I'm a geologist and a scientist. We're here today to talk about mining, its history, its science, and its future. Well, good. Then maybe you can straighten this kid out. Well, don't be so hard on him. He's our future, you're our past. He's going to find a place in industry because of the sacrifices you made and so many like you made in your generation. Hold on now. Flattery's going to get you nowhere. He don't know nothing except how to take the bite out of that coffee. <laughs> oh, no. Let's see what he knows. Okay, how would you define mining? Basically, <clears throat> it is the extraction of minerals, metals, and other resources from the earth. They can be solids like valuable ores and also bulk gravel and coal, liquids like petroleum, and gases like methane, a.k.a. Natural gas? The list is huge. And how long has mining been around? A very long time. Even longer than he's been around. Hey! Easy, kid. It's been around a long time. Animals and humans uh, mine salt, to begin with. Prehistoric humans in uh, Paleolithic England uh, made tools from flint, and that was after they had been making tools from rocks for many millions of years. In Swaziland, Paleolithic humans mined red hematite, or an iron oxide, and used it for either powder or liquid pigments. Mixing with water, they created art that we are impressed with even today. These resources allowed these early humans to hunt larger and more plentiful game. Through mining, they created a more comfortable life for themselves. Accomplishments in mining made possible the Bronze Age of human civilization, as well as the great civilizations of Rome, Egypt, and China. Through the Middle Ages and through the Industrial Revolution, mining has become as important today and essential to our civilization as it ever was. <laughs> Cave painting and spears, please. I was after gold and silver. That's what was going to make me rich. And how do you dig for gold? <laughs> Pickaxe, dynamite, gear for camping and setting up a stake. A strong back. Well, your pickaxe is made of steel which is, uh, through chemistry, a combination of iron and carbon. Your dynamite uh, uses diatomaceous earth as a stabilizer. And your strong back, of course, is from digging and mining. Mining encompasses many disciplines, geology, mathematics, physics, chemistry, engineering that combines them all. Successful large-scale extraction of iron and coal drive industrialization, creating both demand and supply, which is the basis of our economies. Railroads, as you know, and particularly the Transcontinental Railroad, formed the Apollo program of the 1860s. These railroads brought settlers to the American West, creating important chapters in the history of America. These chapters are still being written today. Me? I was after gold and silver. That's where it was at. Not me. I'm after rare earths, materials like atrium, thulium, and scandium. Stuff that we use in superconductors, portable x-ray machines, and ultra-lightweight aerospace alloys. Right now, a lot of our supply comes from overseas. 
So I want to mine them here to help make sure that America has the resources it needs to stay on top in developing cutting edge technology. As you can see, mining played an important part in America's past and will play an even more important part in America's future. Guys like him helped blaze the trail and spur the development of new technologies. New industrial techniques and automation, as well as regulation and mandated safety measures, make mining in the United States safer than ever before. The days of staking a placer claim along the Arkansas River or a vein claim in Leadville are long gone. But the people who did that created a path for us to follow. So if I'm the past, and I'll forgive you for that, by the way, what's the future? During the Apollo program, I was the only geologist astronaut. When I flew in Apollo 17, the last Apollo mission to the moon, I was uniquely experienced to collect samples and make observations related to lunar science. It has been recognized that lunar resources hold potential for use on Earth as well as in space. My colleagues at the University of Wisconsin, for example, recognize that helium-3, a light isotope of helium, has its greatest potential as a source of clean energy for use here on Earth. The space program, like mining through the ages, has created a wealth of new technologies. Well-known examples are, of course, medical monitoring technologies, computer and electronic enhancements, and uh, global positioning satellite systems. Couple American ingenuity with the potential bounty of extraterrestrial resources, and there's no limit to how far we can go in the universe. Whether in outer space, within the Earth, or beneath the oceans, the fundamental drive to explore remains unchanged. This is a passion we see in pioneers like you, and that we look for in young people like you. They used to say that it was impossible that we would walk on the moon, yet here I am. There's no question what we can accomplish if we work together and keep our eyes on the future.